Y'all best get ready to screenshot this now because I'm wearing pants out here in Florida right now in this heat because it's a requirement to go down the track. Trying to kind of break my body into, uh, you know, getting abused by this heat. So on today's episode, basically we have a few things we gotta tidy up in order to be safe and get teched in at the track. So I'm gonna go over some of the things I've already done and then uh, we need to get the bump button going. I couldn't figure it out so I'm gonna show y'all what I actually am gonna do for that. And then we came across this weird thing where this same tire that pulled out in the past, the alignment on it is still doing it. And I don't know how. We went straight when we went to Mexico. The thing went straight and everything was fine. Then all of a sudden we noticed it's not fine. So I'm going to take this thing eventually to an alignment shop, get it done. So we won't be racing down the track in this episode, hopefully next episode. But that's okay because we still got a lot of cool stuff we're going to go over. All right, check it out. Ton is hell in here, but I can actually see on that backup camera now. Okay. Had to angle it up. Are you good for a minute so I can clean this mess up? Yeah, there you go. Perch tight it. Oh yeah. It's hot in that car. Whew. Wearing pants. Trying to use his heat. Way out of alignment there. What happened there? Oh, it pulled. Damn it. <sighs> Same tire keeps pulling out. I'm gonna have to do something about that. Hmm. I gotta get this thing back into alignment. You can see what it is, that thing pulled out again. I could tack the top and bottom on back and front, so don't do that. Absolutely. Give it, give it a good healthy one. If I gotta ever take it off, just buzz it off. Let me show you what I did do that wasn't done, safety-wise. So, uh, engine mount bolts, didn't have no, they got nuts on them now. Back here though, Fuel cell is mounted down and battery, it, yeah, that's got its own kind of mounting deal. Battery is solid strapped in. That's the mount it came with. Bro, that's the mount it came with. That's good for that. <laughs> Stop doing that. Oh, no. <laughs> How many times did you do it? Six times only. You can drive me nuts. I got the, I put a filter on the, I'm done, done back here, we're just gonna, we're gonna go there. I put a filter on the rear end breather line, Chuck, you're an ass. Oh my God. For those of you that don't know, Chuck is one of my best friends and uh, in a past video, he dropped the transmission on me. He's a real character and I enjoy having him in these videos. Your wife. Give her a shove, bub. Oh! oh. Oh ah! This is terrifying. <laughs> you got a you got a thing here that's in the way with a bolt that's too tight. Move it. There we go. Oh my god! Put it back. Put it back. Chad, what are you doing? It's going down. Don't let it go down. Chad, let's do that. You. <laughs> Chuck, she's going down. Don't let it come down. I'm gonna hit it with my toe. <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> what? Sure. What? That ain't how it was supposed to go. <laughs> and now we got to get this back into alignment. Luckily, the steering doesn't have to be changed. Just gotta shove it back in after loosening it. Oh. So this, this here, smooth on smooth. This will occasionally slide no matter how tight you have it. 
which throws the alignment way out, which is not okay. So I'm probably gonna put a big old tack weld from here to here, top bottom, so it don't ever do that. And then when I wanna move it or adjust it, I could just take an angle grinder, cut off the tacks. <laughs> oh dang. Don't you do it! <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> what did I do to you, Chuck? Talk. Yeah, she definitely it's does. It's not going to stay on the little snapper thing. Gotcha. Oh. Wrist breaker. We're good. I like losing eyeballs and stuff. Let me give it a little, little hit there. A little, just a little test rip, you know? Yeah. Oh, dang. I feel good, don't Son, you got her oiled up. Yeah. Good. Yeah. You think it's tight? <laughs> WD-40. Just vaporized everywhere. All right, so now we're gonna get into getting the bump button to function. I got it wired up in the way I thought it was supposed to be correct, but something's not jiving. I got the staging set up with the pulse method and the Holly Terminator X set to 0 0.019 milliseconds or seconds which is in the milliseconds and it, it still ain't uh working so um yeah uh basically that, that's rainwater don't, don't find none of that but basically what i got going on is what you're about to see right here and that's where i just let off the trans brake button and push back on it real quick and i'm thinking about just wiring up a relay so that the bump button can just do that for me instead of having to let go and grab So our buddy Dylan came over and he really loves this build, but he hasn't got to see any of the rowdiness out of it. So I set the rev limiter to 4,400 and let that torque converter eat some heat, son. So you're gonna see some smoke and I don't recommend this. This is how you burn up a torque converter. Now keep in mind, I know I need a new torque converter, so I'm not really too worried about it. And I rebuild my own transmission, so I'm also not worried about that. But um, nitrous is what's going to fix this. A hundred shot is gonna get it over this hump a hell of a lot faster than it currently is. All right, take a look. Don't cringe. All that smoke you're seeing that is the torque converter screaming for help um, you don't ever want to burn it down this is a fresh build on the transmission so you can get away with this once maybe twice without you know really burning up clutch packs and whatnot um, but definitely do not recommend okay here's what's going on with scoot steering so there's a bolt right there that's slotted which allows the lower control arm to pull out and uh, be adjusted out in it there's a bolt in the back too allows some adjustment this tire I'll bring it in align it with the other tire set it back down and sometimes it'll just pull itself out and it is this tire is doing wonky things and we don't want that because when you adjust these you want the you want to jack the front end up to where it's almost off the ground but not quite because when it goes down the track that front's going to be doing this the whole time it's under power and that's where you want to adjust your alignment to basically so <clears throat> this tire is doing weird stuff where uh we readjusted it tightened the piss out of it which y'all saw and then we set it back down and after like 10 or 15 minutes or so, we notice 
that didn't move but somehow the tire was like way out <laughs> like what <laughs> and then we put it on the trailer and it went away so i'm taking it to a professional alignment shop not no tire kingdom and when they're done we're going to weld tabs on each side of those washers so it can't move on everything just weld everywhere so it's just set and if we ever do have to move it you just buzz the the tacks off we're gonna put some healthy tacks on it though all right boys we got a few things here We got our three inch pulley for the alternator. Got an AN8 to AN6 adapter that I had. Had to order this AN8 T union. We gotta pull some fuel off the rail. Well, we're not pulling off the rail, we're gonna pull before the regulator to uh, achieve our wet shot. Got this gauge that goes for the nitrous bottle. Uh, I didn't know if this kit was going to come with one on the bottle. It does not. It's supposed to come with a lightning valve. It would have been, but I guess we'll find out. I can't tell if this is AN4 or AN6. Yeah, it's AN4 or 3. So, have to knock down even further. One of the mounts for the bottle. I don't know if that's like a nitrous button or whatever. Let's get it on the bottle. Fuel in, fuel out, nitrous in, nitrous out. Jetting. Probably going to start off with a 75 shot. It should be plenty. Arm switch. More hoses. Relay. Nozzle. Way tinier than I had pictured it. brackets and additional wiring. So about 30 minutes into this ordeal, got the bottle installed. It's gonna have to take it out to get it filled, but I figure being the driver's side already has enough weight, let's put it on the passenger side and try to bring it back as far as possible. Thought about stuffing it down in there, but I also thought that was pretty sketch. <laughs> Just leaving it down up in there. So it's accessible right there. Both the wing nuts are on the right hand side. You can get to with the trunk open like this pretty easily. Be able to reach up and twist on the feed line, drop that under and all the way up. And we'll drill out a little hole for this guy and I guess just tap it and thread this in because there's no locking or secure nut for this which uh, is not okay. Should have came with one. All right, so basically, we're gonna mount this on that stud there, coil pack stud. Then we're gonna run. We added a 8ANT behind our filter and behind our regulator. And then we have this eight to six AN. And then tomorrow, I uh, had to order a six to four AN. So tomorrow, the six to four AN will go on here. I got a bunch of extra 4AN fittings that I had laying around, so I'll probably 90 off of it. So it'll look something like this. Just be a little bit cleaner. And then that's the fuel supplied to the nitrous setup. And then I'll run this hose back to the bottle. Gotta get the bottle filled. This kit was missing a bunch of stuff. 
I think somebody's, uh, I got it on Amazon, but I think whoever's selling these is actually scamming people. They're selling it as the Proton Pro Kit, and they pulled out, let me show y'all. First thing I noticed was it didn't come with the lightning valve on the bottle. It's just standard bottle. Uh, next thing I noticed was this bag has been resealed right across the center here. And it doesn't have any of the uh, nitrous nozzles in it. These are just the fuel nozzles. I checked all of them and that's pretty much all it came with. So I might have to get a hold of Amazon and see what they'll do. You know, hopefully get a partial refund or something, I don't know. I don't feel like undoing all this stuff. I can promise you I'm not going to undo all this stuff. But the bottle's tied in. Be able to access it through there. I'm going to have to take it to get filled. Still got to do all the wiring and whatnot. Set up the arm button. And the nitrous button. I'm probably not going to use this button. I got a button that I previously used for a rolling two-step. On my last build, good old rolling two step here. You know, 12 gauge ka chow. Cut the top off a shotgun shell, knock the primer out of it. Makes a perfect little button you can just kind of toss when you're done using it. Or maybe mount it in the, you know. A steering wheel something cool but yeah just cool look cool stuff but uh yeah that's where we is at next weekend hopefully if i can get the car line and <coughs> get the bottle filled i'm gonna try and uh hit it with a 75 shot to start see how that does i'm probably gonna i got like 29 like 29 degrees of timing on the trans brake when you're uh when i'm just trying to spool so uh Meaning like in vacuum, no, no boost yet. It's like 29 degrees, that's kind of high. I got a 85, but with nitrous hitting it at 29 degrees, I'm probably gonna pull like three to four degrees out, see how it reacts, cause uh, you know, nitrous. <laughs> I think it's best if I pull a few degrees out of that, just to be sure. But um, yeah, bump button. I'm probably gonna just manually wire using a relay to make turn a button into a momentary, basically an always on switch and a momentary off switch. So basically a bump. I tried setting it up with the Holly. I could not figure it out. So I just kind of played with it by pressing the trans brake down, letting go and repressing it, and it was bumping. So I'm just gonna probably manually wire it. I don't know if that's the best for how that trans brake functions or not, don't know. But what I do know is it'll work. And uh, yeah, that's uh, where we're at, getting ripped off by Amazon. <laughs> and uh, you know, suspension doing wonky things. And, I, and trust me guys, I know when you jack the front up and you adjust the alignment and whatnot, it's going to be a lot different from where you set it down, but that it's doing things that um, I can't explain. <laughs> so like sitting there by itself, not jacked up, tire was laying out from the end. And then I drove it up on the trailer. This is after we fixed it. Like it was doing that. Drove it up on the trailer. Didn't have it strapped down yet. It was gone. So whatever it is, what I'm thinking about doing is I'm just going to get some big washers. And wherever the bolts are, I'm going to weld the washers in so it can't move. And then, uh, you know, if we got to make adjustments, it'll be some grinding and cutting, but we shouldn't have to make adjustments. going to have a guy that knows what he's doing. He's got a couple race cars and get it on his alignment rack, and he's got the, the lasers and stuff. So we'll just get it done right the first time, get him to align it where it's going to be at going down the track and then uh, buzz everything in. We're about to have a hurricane here, Hurricane Debbie, Debbie Downer. So I don't know how long the fallout of that rain's gonna last. Maybe it'll be into next weekend, hopefully not. It's starting to rain right now. <sighs> That's gonna do it for this weekend, fellas. I gotta 
tidy up. This rain's coming down. All right, guys, I'll catch y'all in the next one.